A rustle in the dark, a figure in the trees. Oscillating in and out of existence, the shadow stalks its prey. Every slight shift of its weight, every minuscule twitch of its muscles, is a calculated strategy. All its wits and cunning pointed at one goal. To bring death, swift and silent. The world is filled with a near endless variety of creatures and monsters. Small or large, docile or bloodthirsty, nearly any being one could imagine likely exists out there, waiting to be discovered. One group of monsters that has proven extraordinarily fruitful to research is that of the Flying Wyvern. Defined by its members possessing winged frontal limbs, this classification is by far the most diverse ever described by the Hunter's Guild. It is undoubtedly the most prolific class of monsters, one that has conquered nearly every kind of habitat and niche imaginable. It is also a group that has been extensively studied, so much so that a likely candidate for their origin has long since been suggested. The Wyvern Rex, an extinct species of monster that is believed to be the ancestor of all flying wyvern. Most reconstructions imagine it as a slinking fiend, whose winged forelimbs were mostly used to walk on land rather than fly. From this shared ancestry, flying wyvern took over the world, spreading their wings across vast habitats and largely abandoning the lifestyle of the wyvern rex. And yet, not all descendants of the wyvern rex are so different. Today, there are three known families of flying wyvern that still use their forelimbs for walking. And one of them leads a life unlike any other flying wyvern. East of the central Old World continent lies Fonron, a mysterious landmass filled with relics and ruins of civilizations long gone. Lost cities and decrepit temples line its surface. And in the south of Fonron lies a sea of trees, an endless expanse of flora enormous trees and dense bushes forming a massive jungle. The guild calls it the Great Forest and designates it as a challenging hunting ground. Here, in the shaded wilderness, under the towering canopies, hunters discovered the Narga Kuga, a powerful and swift flying wyvern. Even at first glance, the Nargakuga stands out from other flying wyvern. It possesses a hard beak for a mouth. Its body is partially covered in jet black fur as well as dark scales, and its wings are able to be partially folded between its long, bladed phalange. It's a bizarre sight unlike most flying wyvern, but one that explains itself as the creature's life and behaviors are observed. Nargakuga are ambush predators, meaning that they hunt by sneaking up on prey and pouncing on it, using the element of surprise as a deadly weapon. In a forest this dense, it's a very valuable strategy. For this to work, the predator in question must have certain characteristics. Stealth, speed, flexibility, a high degree of perception in order to locate and track prey, as well as a backup plan should the initial ambush fail. The Nargakuga has evolved to display all of these characteristics. Its thick fur is a compromise aimed at maximizing speed and stealth. 
a heavy armor shell, like that of other flying wyvern, would both slow the Nargakuga down and make its movements louder. So instead, it grows a coat of hair-like filaments over a simple scale skin. This allows for silent and fast movements while also providing decent protection. While some Nargakuga may look downright fluffy, their fur is actually quite stiff and sturdy, able to resist a surprising amount of force. The coat's black color, meanwhile, helps the Nargakuga blend into its environment, as it generally hunts at night among the thick foliage, a solid sea of pitch black. Its folded wings and phalange serve a dual purpose, both for hunting and for perception. Nargakuga are classified as part of the False Foot Wyvern Infraorder, a group of flying wyverns that retained the Wyvern Rex quadruped body plan, but that are nonetheless able to use their wings for either limited or full flight. In the Nargakuga's case, its wings can still be used to fly, and, more importantly, to glide between the massive trees of its home forest. This is, however, not the main benefit of its unique wing structure. Its large phalange are highly mobile, able to be swayed and angled rapidly and accurately. This mechanism is what folds and unfolds the wing membranes, but it also enables the Nargakuga's most fascinating ability. By rapidly shaking the phalange, a distinct sound is created that is then used for echolocation. As the sound bounces around the environment, the wyvern's excellent hearing is able to map out its surroundings accurately, an extremely useful supplement to the Nargakuga's acute eyesight, and an invaluable tool in the dead of night. These phalange also serve as one of the wyvern's primary methods of attack. The outermost phalange sports a sharp edge making it a powerful blade that can cut through both foliage and flesh. While this can be useful for cutting through the dense flora of the jungle, this is mainly the Nargakuga's preferred method of killing prey. When lunging at its target from the darkness, Nargakuga are known to swing their wing arms forward with the bladed phalange extended, slashing their victim and often killing them instantly, if not outright, cleaving them apart. Should this somehow not be enough, it does have a secondary weapon it can use, its long prehensile tail. Nargakuga can swing their tails with astonishing force, and very few targets can survive a direct hit. This tail swing also has a much wider range than one might expect. Specialized cartilage that sits between the bones of the tail allow the entire limb to stretch like rubber when affected by the centrifugal force of the swing. This extends the reach of this attack, letting it hit victims even when they thought they were at a safe distance. And if a target should somehow escape the blade and the tail, the Nargakuga has one last ace up its sleeve. At the tip of the tail, the wyvern grows a bundle of specialized scales, similar in shape to long feathered darts. Unlike feathers, however, these scales have sharp edges and can be detached from the tail at will. This grants the Nargakuga a long distance attack, wherein it swings its tail above its head to launch these dart scales at escaping prey. Their sharp edges cut through victims like blades and can still be dangerous even if they miss. Stepping on one that has landed on the ground is sure to tear up the unfortunate victim's feet. Equipped with all of these adaptations, the Nargakuga is a shrewd predator and an overall prolific monster. It spends its nights hunting while resting during the day. It was long considered to be strictly nocturnal, but recent observations have shown that it can indeed be active during the day, if only to sunbathe and hydrate itself. As specialized as this wyvern is for quick kills and bursts of speed, 
it does not seek out prolonged contests of power. However, like all wild animals, it will sometimes encounter a rival, be they human or monster, that must be driven off one way or another. During these territorial disputes, the Nargakuga employs a terrifying threat display. By extending its phalange as wide as possible, the wyvern shows off its sharp blades as a warning. Simultaneously, its tail will begin twitching high up in the air as the dart scales on its end stand erect, bushing the tail tip and displaying the Nargakuga's weapons. Finally, as the wyvern grows more agitated, its most notorious display emerges. Around the eyes and inside the ears, the Nargakuga's skin is particularly translucent, allowing blood vessels to be seen clearly. When enraged, these patches of skin begin to glow with a bright red due to increased blood flow, giving the Nargakuga a frightening appearance. This trailing red glow around its eyes is the final warning any opponent will get. The wyvern will attack very soon after it appears. In prolonged combat, the Nargakuga can stand its ground admirably. Between its violent wing slashes and devastating tail slams, it can prove a fierce opponent. It is also an intelligent creature, leaping around the field to reposition itself advantageously, performing complex strategies, and even escaping man-made traps with ease. It can run into trouble under certain circumstances, though. Its eyes and ears are exceptionally sharp, and as a result, very sensitive. Both senses can easily be overwhelmed by loud noises or flashes of light, respectively. Should this happen, the Nargakuga will often fly into a wrathful frenzy, lashing out with none of the intelligence and cunning it usually displays. While it is a truly ferocious threat in this state, its brutish behavior and single-minded obsession can be exploited and outmaneuvered by its foe. Nevertheless, the Nargakuga is generally a very successful genus. Even before the wyvern was officially discovered and described by the Hunter's Guild, equipment and weapons featuring its dark scales and fangs would sometimes be spotted on foreign warriors passing through Dandorma. Following its discovery in Fonron, Nargakuga were found to live in a wide variety of habitats across all three known continents. With such proliferation naturally comes variation. Even within the common black species, Nargakuga tenebris, there are different types of Nargakuga depending on specific habitat and ancestry. In the Great Forest alone, various color morphs of Nargakuga are known to exist. While the majority sport the iconic jet black fur, individuals with varying shades of blue and even white albinos have been spotted in the past. While it isn't understood yet quite how this color variation works, it seems that the rarest kind of Nargakuga tenebris has a deep blue coat. Regional variation is also a factor, as different environments cause the same creature to prioritize different aspects of itself as it spends time there across the generations. There are generally believed to be three regional variations of Nargakuga tenebris, corresponding to the three continents. Fonron Nargakuga were discovered first, and are defined by the predominantly arboreal lifestyle, as well as an overall slender frame. They can sometimes be seen walking only on their hind legs, and will use their wings liberally to glide and fly between trees. These Nargakuga can uniquely be tracked through the trees by observing branches. The wyvern's wing blades leave small, shallow cuts in the bark, a telltale sign of a Nargakuga's path. Old World Nargakuga inhabit the central continent, and are noticeably larger than their Fonronian counterpart. 
This additional muscle mass is a result of a changed lifestyle. The Old World continent holds many wonders, but one thing it does not have is a massive forest with trees as large and sturdy as those in the Great Forest. Due to this, Old World Nargakuga do not predominantly live in trees. While some regions may have isolated trees large enough to rest on, such as the misty peaks near Yukumo, Old World Nargakuga generally dwell on the ground and can therefore afford to be heavier and more muscular than a light and slender Fonronian variation. New World Nargakuga are the most drastic regional variation. Like the Old World variation, they too live primarily on the ground, displaying a similarly enhanced musculature. While it does prowl the ancient trees of the New World, those trees are so thick and large that they are essentially indistinguishable from solid ground, thus not encouraging arboreal adaptations. The New World's Nargakuga's front limbs are especially bulky. Perhaps as a consequence of this, this variation exclusively walks on all fours and, more shockingly, has never been observed flying. It is believed that their wing membranes are entirely vestigial. Their other major difference compared to the other variations lies in the tail. The tail spikes of New World Nargakuga do not have smooth, sharp edges, but are instead serrated and jagged. They do not cut as much as they rip and tear, causing severe bleeding and horrific open wounds. This gives New World Nargakuga an additional option while hunting. Should the initial killing blow fail, the wyvern can simply retreat and stalk its prey from afar, watching it bleed out and perish due to the injury sustained from the tail spikes. Besides the regional variations within Nargakuga tenebris, the genus Nargakuga contains two more species, both rarer than the black species. In lush, humid environments, one may find the green Nargakuga, a species of Nargakuga sporting an eponymous green coat of fur. While the black species uses its dark coloration to blend into the night, the green Nargakuga's coat is more specifically suited to hide among foliage. This difference has led guild scholars to theorize that the green Nargakuga might hunt partially or even mainly during the day, where discoloration would just be more advantageous than a black one. Green Nargakuga have also been noted to utilize their tail more often and with more precision than the black species. The tail is also where the green Nargakuga's other major adaptation can be found. Like the New World Nargakuga, its tail spikes are modified. Instead of having a sharp edge or a serrated edge, the tail spikes of the green Nargakuga are blunt, with special fibers that maximize impact. Instead of cutting or tearing, these spikes are meant to bludgeon targets, breaking bones and causing concussions. The third species of Nargakuga is so exceptionally rare that its actual natural habitat has not yet been determined. It has only ever been sighted in the ruined cities of Fonron, ancient sites that often attract powerful monsters. Here, at night, hunters have very rarely laid their eyes upon the lucent Nargakuga. Despite appearing in Fonron, its musculature is quite developed. Its silvery white coat stands out drastically compared to its cousins. This coloration does not help with camouflage, because it doesn't need to. In a truly astounding example of evolution's ingenuity, the lucent Nargakuga can go invisible. This ability is not yet fully understood, but it appears that through a complex interplay of the wyvern's fur, the underlying scales, and its highly reflective wing blades, 
The loosened Nargakuga's body is able to bend moonlight in a way that creates a mirage, rendering the creature invisible. This seems to be a highly delicate process, as the wyvern is extremely protective of its fur. It also only seems to work with moonlight. Sunlight may be too strong for the effect to work properly. It also needs the night to be foggy, as lucent Nargakugas seem to avoid clear nights. Either way, this ability makes the lucent Nargakuga an unparalleled predator at night, able to vanish into thin air at will. Like many of the other Nargakuga variations, it also has its own unique tail adaptation. Its tail spikes contain a deadly venom, which makes the lucent Nargakuga's invisible ambushes nearly impossible to survive. While the production of this venom is not yet understood, it seems to require physical effort to activate. Lucent Nargakuga have to shake their tail to set up their venomous spikes before being able to use them. With such a prolific lifestyle, diversity of species and wide habitats, it should come as no surprise perhaps that Nargakuga are also able to produce deviants, abnormal individuals created by specific factors and generally characterized by posing an immense threat to their environments and sometimes themselves. Deviants only occur very rarely, but with a population as thriving as the Nargakuga, it's merely a matter of time. Deviant Nargakuga are called Silverwind Nargakuga, and occur when an exceptionally skilled Nargakuga reaches old age. The name is derived from the white streaks that pepper the aging wyvern's coat. While the natural lifespan of Nargakuga is not known, which is the case for most monsters, it is assumed that in order to become a Silverwind, an individual must surpass the species' regular lifespan somewhat. Silverwind Nargakuga are fierce individuals. Their lifetime of experience makes them cunning hunters, and untold years worth of practice has honed their attacks to perfection. Despite their presumed age, these wyvern haven't slowed down and can easily keep up with their younger brethren. They also display increased precision with their tail spikes. But what truly sets them apart is one ability, unseen in any other confirmed creature. The tail of the Silverwind Nargakuga can reach absurd speeds when swung, to the point where it produces gales of wind pressure that shoot forth from it. These blades of air are not mere breezes. They are able to cut through flesh like a sword, killing prey from afar. Combined with the wyvern's speed, the Silverwind Nargakuga is exceptionally dangerous, and the guild keeps a close eye on them whenever they emerge. Hunters seeking to slay a deviant must have a special permit. It is creatures such as these that remind us just how diverse the world really is. There appears to be no limit to the variety and ingenuity that nature is capable of. So what else are we to do but to record, study, and marvel at this world of monsters? Next time on Monster Hunter Ecology. Since ancient times, it stalks the bush. Its feathers gleam with the dignity of its ancestry. Its beak stands in the shadow of its lineage. An ancient creature, a soporific dancer. A bird, lost to time, nearly forgotten. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you are as excited about this second season of Monster Hunter Ecology as I am. Um, and as always, if you want to support the channel, Patreon exists, you get to watch these videos a little early. 
Speaking of patron, a very special thank you to all of our patrons, including Big Bento, My Name Gone, The Dollar Fish, Yamiroth, Andre, Ryan Hook, Thick, Kuroneko, Zion H. V. Augenson, A.J. Rivera, Alistair, Jacob Bennett, Soruka, Gengreatest, Sir Nutnut, Terador, Emperor Evie, Rambling Robin, Lizric, Hashi, Black Ace 202, Dissy, Habo Himbro Mirror, Magenta Magenta, Danilo Villavicencio, Arcturian 711, Russell, Person 212, Claire Miboon, Oakwood Tree, Mr. Pyramid, Pirifuego, Makoto 2, Project Iceman, Peroscoco, Geo, Jamie Tate, Niels Schlatter, Fiction Ape, Iron Camel, and Nah. I'm going to bed. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.